Welcome, everybody. We are on the 26th episode of the Hashtag Investors podcast. I am your host, Scott Bauer. And today we have a very special guest, Eric Reichenberger with Pioneer Title Agency. Eric. Good afternoon. Uh, Thanks for having me on, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate you being here. I know that you are an AZ native, uh, Arizona native. You've been in the title escrow business for over 21 years, attended college at ASU and Sounds like your grandparents were real estate investors who moved from LA to Phoenix to start the real estate acquisition. So why don't you, uh, why don't you go ahead and give our listeners a little bit more about your background and you know, what you're focused on now with Pioneer Title? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, like you said, I mean, uh, 21 plus years now in the business coming up on 22, which is very surprising for me at Blink and, and this lovely uh, real estate escrow title industry that just flies right by. Um, Started working in the business when I was at ASU, just uh, kind of as, uh, you know, never thought I'd stick with it, but it was a, you know, an interesting, uh, interesting career choice, uh, which I guess I could say I fell into that career because I never thought I'd stick in the escrow title business for as long as I have. But started working in it when I was at ASU, again, uh, with, with, with the grandparents being real estate investors, as soon as I started learning more from the internal side on how things work, uh, not only from the transactional side uh, of real estate, but from the escrow title side, it, it, it really wet my whistle and uh, made me want to, you know, stick in the business and, uh, and pursue it more. So, uh, you know, like I said, uh, close to 22 years now later, uh, you know, climbing the ladder here in the escrow title business, but uh, also still even personally dabble in the real estate investment following uh, my grandparents' footsteps. So, um, and of course, as you said, I keep the pitchfork high in the air for ASU. So apologize to the listeners that have cattails. <laughs> well, hey man, I, I really appreciate that information, and it's got to be kind of, got to be kind of not not comforting. I don't think is the word, but it, it got to it's got to make you feel good that your grandparents were real estate investors themselves. So, from your side, you had an inside look at the business, you know, from a transaction standpoint, as from an investment standpoint, you had that to kind of look at. Would you say that that was a major spark to you getting into the, you know, two title? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, they came, like I said, when they came here from California, from the LA area, um, they, they actually bought in the perfect area of town. They bought in North Central Phoenix, right there on the, the Central Corridor, Central and Bethany home. And, uh, you know, doing that in the, uh, uh, you know, really early 70s, you know, they were able to acquire some pretty large parcels of land uh, with homes on them at, at, a, uh, at an attractive rate. And, uh, you know, I grew up on, on one of those, uh, in one of those homes on one of those parcels of land. And so as, as I grew up, uh, and then got to, you know, be, uh, you know, in my late teens, early twenties and seeing the appreciation and, and their investment, uh, from their investment that they made, uh, from years, uh, before, uh, you know, obviously earning a, a, a solid living, uh, is something I think that everyone strives for. Um, but outside of it, it was also just the, uh, the interest and the nature of the business on how the transactions were done, um, uh, and how they're even done today that, that really, uh, started, uh, piquing my interest in the business. So, um, I guess you could say it's in the blood, although I'm the only one in my family who, who did not go down the path of medicine outside of my grandparents <laughs> and my mom, everybody else went into medicine. And so I constantly had to have to talk to, uh, a family of uh, doctors and uh, neuro nurses uh, in, in regards to uh, the world of real estate and educating them on it. Yeah, no, definitely. And actually that could be, you know, from an investor standpoint, um, those are the type of sub people that you want to have around, right? So I'm sure you have some people you could lean on had, if you ever wanted to get into, you know, some, some of your own investments, uh, you have some investments too, right? Yeah, I, I do. I have uh, I have a few uh, investment properties. Uh, have participated in uh, in several flips over the years as well. Um, and uh, you know, if, if if I had more time outside of the the, the busy life in the escrow title business, I probably would uh, probably would be doing it more full time than uh, you know as as attractive deal present themselves. But um, uh, definitely think I'll always uh, have my finger in the real estate investment world as well, uh, just because it's. You know, it's a smart thing to do. It's a great way to diversify uh, any investment portfolio. Um, but I think it's probably one of the smartest investments that, that anybody can do because of, uh, honestly, because of the security of it and the tax advantages that come off of it as well. Right, 
Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, let's take this time then to kind of shift into the title business. Cause of course all the listeners out here, you know, are real estate investors. They might have large portfolios. They might have apartment buildings. They might be single family investors, what, whatever it may be, but every single one of them has to use a title company. Um, at least for the most part, unless you're in a state with, uh, where the attorneys do it. But regardless, um, having a competent and reliable title company on your side as an investor, I think is one of the most, you know, very important keys to your team. Cause of course, none of us can do this on our own. We have to do it with a team of people and that includes titles. So what does pioneer title, what differentiates you from another title company out there? Well, so what you just kind of talked on, I mean, you really did hit the keys on it is, is you know, we are, we are a, a, a huge intricate part of that transaction because we're, you know, we're the closer, we're the, we're the neutral third party, we're the closer, but you also need to make sure that uh, your closer is educated in, in the process, whether it be a, a wholesale investment from a wholesale investment side, uh, which obviously, as you know, is, is a little bit, uh, a little bit different than well, actually a lot more different than your, you know, traditional fix and flip investment right. or buying investment escrow. Um, so, you know, having a, an escrow officer that understands uh, how the wholesale uh, works versus a fix and flip uh, escrow. Um, I, I really can't tell you how intricate that is and how, how instrumental that is because uh, as you're, you know, as you're working a wholesale uh, escrow file, you know, that escrow officer has to uh, understand uh, who they can talk to in that transaction, uh, what they can divulge, what they can say, and what they cannot say. Because in a wholesale transaction, um, as you know, that could have one leg, two legs. It could have eight legs, uh, depending on how many times a property is, is uh, uh, wholesaled or wholesaled uh, from investor to investor until it finally reaches whomever's going to be the fix and flipper or end user. Um, and the last thing you want is uh, someone uh, – talking from, from file to file or uh, from party to party that one uh, doesn't really have the authority to do so. And, and two, doesn't properly understand what they're talking about, which we've seen, um, you know, we've seen and heard about from some, some clients we've picked up along the way. Um, you know, a pioneer, we're, we're really uh, an investor friendly title company. Um, so we understand all those different types of transactions. Um, and I don't want to throw every escrow officer at Pioneer in that in that uh, melting pot, but so I'll say uh, a, a many or a good a good uh, couple handfuls of our uh, escrow officers understand those investor friendly transactions. Uh, it makes us an investor friendly title company. Um, and and like I said, it's 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 intricate because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of moving parts. And when you get a title company that doesn't understand that, and you're in the escrow process. Uh, at that other title company, um, we've had files that have transferred over from other title companies because the process is so bad that it almost kills the deal. And we'll get it uh, very late in the transaction and end up pulling a rabbit out of the hat and saving the deal. So, um, you know, really just having a, a strong knowledge of, of how that transaction works, that particular transaction, but also being that investor friendly title company and really looking at taking down hurdles, not putting them up, uh, you know, for the greater good of getting a deal closed um, is something that we look at doing. If something can't be done because of a legal way, you know, because of some type of legal hurdle, uh, we'll obviously notify the party or parties about that. But we try to find a workaround rather than just kill the deal. We, we, we might tell them, hey, you can't do it this way because, you know, that's, that's not legal, but here, here's a way you can do it. And, um, and, uh, you know, maybe talk this over with the parties and see if that's something that can, uh, that can work for you guys. So, uh, that's one of the ways that we differentiate ourselves. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I know from a title standpoint, I, I have done over a hundred deals with pioneer title and every single one has come out just as we expected. I've also grabbed files that have not worked out for whatever reason at other title companies and brought them to pioneer title and also had success. So what you just said is certainly true. Um, and I think that, you know, if you're doing an easy transaction, well, for every file or every transaction out there, it might be a little bit different, you know, whether you're assigning it, let's say on a wholesale deal or you're double escrowing it, which 
some title companies just plain don't know what that is, which when I found that out was very surprising. I thought it was common knowledge. But if you don't have a competent uh, escrow officer that knows what they're doing and a title company to support them, then I mean, you could lose a transaction just because they're not knowledgeable and how that works. So kind of once again, back to your point, you have to have a, a knowledgeable title company. But in other deals where things get tricky, um, you know, something comes up with the file, there's a probate issue or there's, you know, a long lost relative that all of a sudden pops up out of nowhere. You got to understand how to protect yourself as well. Or yep. if there was something that happened in, in title that wasn't, you know, wasn't protected, you want to make sure or wasn't, I guess, covered. You want to make sure that you as the investor is protected if something should come up after the fact and want to make sure that the title company is going to stand behind you. I mean, talk on that for a minute. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so going back to, to, to what you said, um, uh, you know, in regards to a, a potential probate issue, I think on, on a, you know, a lot of these uh, or, or uh, you know, a fair amount of these investor deals, uh, you have parties that, you know, look to sell a property because, uh, you know, a spouse or family member died. And, uh, you know, that information might not have been extracted from, from the seller at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, not because anybody's trying to hide anything. It's just, you know, as you know, these deals can come together very fast. Uh, these sellers uh, can be emotional. It can be a death that took place, you know, years and years ago, and they're not thinking about it. And, um, and we, from a title side, don't find out about it until we get the title report back and, uh, and see that there should be a, you know, uh, uh, a husband or a wife or, uh, you know, another vested party that needs to be signing off on this transaction. And, um, so at that time, in a you know in a in a transaction that can be uh, time is of the essence, meaning a quick close, um, that can throw some some kinks in the chain. So um, obviously, from a standpoint of you know asking questions to uh, to to our clients and customers who are directing the escrow our way, uh, and 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 educating them on you know questions they should be asking as they're you know going through the contract paperwork uh, is, is is probably a um, you know, probably another way that, that I'd like to say that we try to help differentiate ourselves from advice on what's going to help prevent stumbling blocks during an escrow transaction. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But we do, we do uh, run across that uh, from a probate side of things. And uh, obviously uh, talking on that a little bit um, more, you could, you know, hopefully get, get by with an express probate you know, if, you know, if it's under a certain amount. Um, but if not, you know, again, if we don't have all the information up front and we find it out at that point, uh, we do everything in our power to try to uh, assist the clients in, in getting, getting the process handled and going as quick as possible and notifying all parties. Um, another thing that's a little bit uh, that can pop up that's a little bit uh, tricky um, uh, are, are just unusual liens that can pop up on properties uh, where you might not be able to find the, the lien holder on some lien that, um, that that's recorded against the property, but is showing is still valid. And um, so we kind of try to go, uh, I won't expose all of our secrets, but we try to go above and beyond uh, in ways that we search for those uh, liens in order to track down those parties and make sure that, um, that all parties are uh, are protected in that, so there's not a lien sitting out there exposing uh, anybody. Um, uh, and then another side, kind of touching on uh, uh, you know numerous parties that can be involved in a transaction from a from a vested side, uh, whether it be on an actual vesting deed or because there's a probate involved. Um, giving a real quick example is we had a wholesale deal. Uh, just recently, last month, that had 17 people that needed to sign off on the transaction in order for it to move forward and close because uh, you had some parties that died and you had 17 potential heirs uh, that were literally all across the world, meaning somewhere in, uh, somewhere in Asia, somewhere in prison, <laughs> somewhere uh, in other states. Uh, so, this particular transaction where it was extremely, extremely uh, time consuming, it was also extremely difficult uh, and you would not have wanted your average uh, escrow officer that's not involved in those type of transactions work in that file. And because we had an experienced escrow officer working that file, we were able to actually successfully close that escrow. And believe it or not, 
we closed it on time. <laughs> Which yeah, was, that, that's phenomenal. You know, when you're, you got people everywhere spread out across the entire world, it's hard to get that all into one place, get everybody to sign off on it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I know as an investor, somebody that's out there doing deals and whatever not, once, you know, it's hard enough to find the deal to get, you know, either get it under contract or secure it uh, in a way where you can get it to title. Um, the worst feeling in the world is if you um, do your job as the investor or you find a property and then all of a sudden he, you get it to title and they don't know what they're doing. And so they end up, you know, messing your file up and you end up losing the deal because of title. You know, that, that I think is one of the worst things that could happen. And, you know, you at Pioneer, uh, th thus far, that has not happened to me even one time. Uh, we've saved deals, if anything else. So uh, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, we, you know, we feel that, uh, you know, obviously the education part's uh, very important. Um, for me, uh, and at least us, I'd say the, the communication side is equally as important um, to all parties. Um, again, you know, there are certain things we can talk about from transaction to transaction. Um, that that we're able to to discuss and there's certain things that we're not we are not so and i understand that probably not everybody uh, not not everybody who's involved in a transaction understands that they might think that uh, an escrow officer is uh you know has lack of communication or is stonewalling them but there's just certain legalities during these transactions as you know where you can't talk from one side of the file to another uh, because of, uh, you know, the, the legalities of, uh, of sharing information. So, right. um, so, you know, I can say at least from, from our standpoint is communication is very important to our customers, to all sides of the transaction, uh, but also respecting the, the privacy and, um, and the privacy rights of, of each party in the transaction is equally as important. Right. Right. And as, you know, as a, either party on either side, you would, you would want that, right. You wouldn't want them sharing information. Um, do you, and tell the listeners more about the types of properties that you, that you, um, insure, do you do all of them commercial multifamily? Uh, yeah, just, absolutely. You know, so, uh, probably our, our most common obviously is a uh, single family, uh, single family residential, um, uh, from an investment side. Um, but you know, obviously multifamily, uh, over the years, over the past 10 years is really, uh, really gained legs, I would say, from, a, from an investor standpoint, mm -hmm. uh, not, not just your more institutional, uh, larger investors that are partaking in the acquisitions of, uh, of the multifamily properties. It's, uh, you know, you're getting down to your mom and pop investors that are starting to buy uh, anything from duplexes and triplexes uh, all the way to, you know, smaller 25 unit uh, multifamily um, properties. So, uh, those those two from an investment side are probably uh, the the two most common side that we title insure. But with that being said, uh, we you know we do very very large commercial uh, transactions as well here at Pioneer, mm -hmm. uh, hotels to large apartment complexes in excess of you know twelve fifteen million dollars. Uh, we've closed a couple of those uh, this past year or this this year. Um, down to, you know, large hotels and, and huge, huge parcels of land. Uh, so commercially, we're, uh, commercially we're, we're capable of doing those transactions as well. We have a, a commercial unit that specifically uh, handle those transactions. Um, and we try to really just place our, our customers and the people coming into us with the best, uh, the best person, the best escrow officer that's uh, fit to handle that transaction. Meaning. Right. Meaning we're not going to have a, a residential escrow officer try to close a, uh, uh, you know, maybe a, a large hotel deal um, up in Flagstaff if their forte is a residential commercial, um, where I think you might find that at other title companies, um, not all of them, but at others, they try to just, you know, fit every peg and, you know, every square peg in, in the round hole and, and hope that it sticks. And here we really just try to uh, play to the strengths of the transaction as well, so that there's right. no no uh, guessing games going on in the uh, 23rd hour of the escrow. Right, right, and that's that's fantastic. And I want to touch real quick on on fees too, because some title companies that I've you know seen over the years, their fees are ridiculously high. And you're you know you're looking at the HUD statement, you're coming up, you're like, gosh, that seems just ridiculous. And with Pioneer Title, that's not the case. I mean, it's 
everything is affordable. Everything makes sense. Everything is, you know, you're not, you're not being gouged when it comes to just title and escrow fees. So could you touch on that a little bit? Is there some strategy that Pioneer has incorporated that really allows them to be that way? Or cause you know, I mean, I understand everything costs money, but um, yeah. you guys have been really, really good at making sure it's not too expensive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think you're going to see a lot of that from the side that um, we are we are privately owned, privately held company by the uh, by the Newland family. We're not we don't have shareholders uh, uh, on Wall Street that we have to pay. Um, so we can operate on a uh, a smaller profit margin than um, than uh, you know our our um, publicly traded competition out there. And because of that, we don't need to build in to the fees, excess, excess fees or exorbitant uh, escrow fees and title fees, um, we can, you know, obviously be competitive uh, by doing that. But because we don't have those, those investors that we have to pay on Wall Street, um, and again, because we can operate on a smaller profit margin because of that, mm-hmm. it allows us to also stay um, well-staffed without having to worry about um, what you see at some of our, you know, friendly competitors, again, that are publicly traded is they might add staff and cut staff depending on what, what, you know, what the transactions, uh, transaction openings look like that month to where we pretty much stay overstaffed, if anything. So if it's a busy month uh, coming up ahead and, you know, the openings of, you know, are already there, uh, we're not scrambling to find, um, to find support staff to help those escrow officers with the closing they're they're already here and um we're able to do that and still offer those competitive fees which you know as you said you've seen them kind of all around the board at at different title companies and 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 they can get pretty high um i definitely will say it's 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 helped us in transactions where we might have had uh an investor on the cross side of the deal and they see their, their closing fees and uh, they ask us and they say, wow, are, are these your, your regular, your regular fees when, uh, closing escrow and title with you? And we say, yeah, those are, those are our standard fees. And of course we've issued you an investor rate because you are an investor. Uh, but they, they'll tell us, Hey, wow, you're really crushing the fees from the title company that I normally use. And they give me the investor rate and you're substantially cheaper. So, uh, we've definitely picked up business, uh, or, or, or gotten, I'd say the, the next chance um on a deal because of our competitiveness and fees and um you know i never want to say we're the we're the cheapest in town um right. we are definitely right there we're one of them uh but aside from that i really i really pride ourselves i think more off service than our fees so the i would say the fees are really um uh secondary at least to to me and i think to most of our investors because they want to make sure that their deals are going to close without any hurdles, stumbling blocks, uh, because that's going to cost them a lot more on the bottom line than, than, the you know, several hundred dollars that they might pay, uh, elsewhere, you know? So, right. um, I think the service really, uh, uh is a, a one and one a with, uh, service and fees are one and one a when it, when it comes to, um, uh, offering great service and, uh, and a closing experience. Well, as an investor, nobody wants to, let's say, give away money or spend money in, in areas where you don't feel it's necessary. So that's why I brought up the fees. I think it's just something for people to understand is that, you, you know, you don't want to be the cheapest guy in town. But at the same time, if your service matches uh, for an affordable rate, who's not going to go that way, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's the best way to go. So I Absolutely. appreciate you sharing that. Absolutely. Um, so that, that really works out well. I, I want to, uh, you know, I appreciate you sharing more about Pioneer Title, letting all the listeners know kind of what differentiates you from everybody else and listeners out there. I mean, it's, it's an amazing difference um, from, from title company to title company, what service you get. And not only that, but I know I can pick up the phone. I can call Eric. I can call Casey. I can call whoever I want to almost at any time. doesn't matter if it's during the week, if it's on the weekend, it doesn't matter. And somebody's going to answer or at least give me a call back. So that one-on-one connection is huge. I mean, that's, you just, you don't, you don't necessarily feel like you always get that at every title company. So anyways. Um, Absolutely. Well, we're, that's, that's another way where I know I personally and in case you've well, as well as have, uh, have grown our business over the years is making ourselves available to answer questions uh, 
Um, at times that might not be normal, regular business hours. And, uh, it's definitely something that's, um, come expected at least of me and her during this, uh, uh, during this run in our career in the escrow and title industry. And we understand that, uh, you know, investors, realtors, et cetera, aren't nine to five. And so, um, you know, where those are our business hours, we try to be a little bit flexible and in, in answering those phones and text messages and emails, even though it might be, uh, a weekend or evening for you. So I appreciate right. the recognition on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's a really good time to kind of switch gears. We're, uh, we're coming up on to time. So let's go into a lightning round. You ready? Yes, sir. All right. What is your hashtag invest this tip to keep our listeners moving forward? Uh, hashtag invest this tip. Um, I would say, you know, uh, I guess I'd probably say the, the, invest the hashtag invest this tip would say really investigate the knowledge behind your uh your escrow officer and your escrow title company because um you know at the end of the day we're not all created equal um and um uh, i think it's very very important that uh that any investor work with a an escrow officer an escrow agent that um you know is is super intuitive when it comes to closing those type of escrows Perfect. Perfect. Do you have a, what is your favorite book that you've ever read and what impact did that have on you? Well, my favorite book I ever read actually goes back to a childhood book, which is, uh, uh, so I'm going to make this a two part answer for you, Scott, <laughs> uh, where the sidewalk ends. Shel Silverstein was a book that my mom and dad got me when I was a young, young kid. And it's a book of just short kind of almost kids poems that, uh, that, you know, literally to this day, I still read. And I know that sounds funny because, you know, I'm an adult now, but uh, I still quote that to my niece and nephew. But speaking of a book of quotes, uh, a gentleman by the name of Daryl Turner uh, has a book called Quote Me on That. And uh, he's got a couple books out, but Daryl is a, uh, he's kind of a, a sales and marketing uh, trainer, if you will, for, uh, for the title and escrow industry. And he just has a, a book of, of daily quotes and um, they're really, they're really fun. They're, they're usually kind of make you laugh, but with almost every quote you read, you look at it and you go, there's absolute truth to that. At least I'd say on a, probably about 85% of them. So that's probably one of my uh, easy books to look at, glance at, and, and that I constantly am flipping through is quote me on that by, uh, by Daryl Turner. Awesome. Thank you for that. And it probably makes you uh you know, step back, whatever you're doing and, and kind of reshift your, your mind or your focus and you get a little laughter or you get a little tip out of the day. And so you know, I appreciate you sharing that. I've never read it. So I'm going to put that on the, the list to buy. I'll let you, I'll let you borrow my copy if you want it. <laughs> I'm, in. I'm in. All right. Um, who's giving you the best advice um, that you've ever been given? And what is that? You no, know, um, you know, I always kind of look back to, to, to my dad and my mom on that. Um, you know, I know it sounds funny to say the best advice is parental advice, but you know, in my cases, it's, it's, it's literally come from, from both of them. Um, you know, my mom kind of always told me, uh, and it's funny, she got me a, a Christmas gift for this one year because it's something that she's always preached, which was, you know, shoot for the moon. And even if you miss, you'll land amongst the stars. And, um, that was a little quote that was, uh, you know, printed on the coffee cup and it just kind of plays to the, to the, you know, the message or the gospel that she preached, uh, since, you know, since I was a kid, which is, you know, just always strive to be the best and, and what you do. Um, and if you enjoy what you do, it's never work, it'll just be fun and you'll, you'll succeed in it. And, um, I think i found that in the, uh, from the escrow and title business side of things, but as well as the, uh, investment real estate. I, I enjoy both sides uh, very much. And uh, again, looking back to my, to both my parents uh, for, uh, for those, uh, for those uh, advice pieces that they offered. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Shoot for the moon. You cannot ever beat that because you're right. Even if you miss, you're still going to land with the stars. So awesome. Appreciate that. Um, right. how, do, how do you like to get back? Um, I'm a pretty charitable person, uh, from a couple of different ways. One, uh, obviously monetarily, um, you know, making monetary donations to, uh, to several of the cancer societies, pancreatic cancer society, uh, skin cancer society, breast cancer, et cetera. Um, 
Uh, it's kind of close to my heart uh, in regards to my dad's side. My dad passed away from cancer here just a couple of years ago. So uh, giving to those charities and, and, and numerous other ones uh, monetarily is, uh, is a way I'd like to give back. Uh, and then outside of that, just um, one of the funny, funny things, I'm kind of a, uh, I'm a recycler, but, um, you know, I, I have a, I have a buddy and I help take care of his, uh, uh, one of his, uh, rental properties in Paradise Valley, which is a very large home. And it's always stacked with, uh, uh, everything from, um, hygiene supplies to you name it. And, you know, even if, even though we have the, the pantries, uh, stocked, I, I'll, I'll tend to take some of that stuff that, that I buy and he buys and we'll put together little care packages and actually hand them out to, uh, the less fortunate and homeless people that we might see on the road. So I try to keep uh, at least uh, three to four bags. I call them hygiene bags in the trunk of my car. So if I see someone that um, that I feel is a real homeless person, not a person just trying to get a dime on the side of the freeway, right. uh, is a real homeless person, I'll actually pull over and uh, give them one of these uh, these uh, hygiene uh, bags, if you will, um, which have everything in it from soap, razor, toothbrush to uh, – sometimes even, uh, you know, protein bars and granola bars. Gosh, that's awesome. Somebody really appreciates that, I'm sure. And uh, you probably changed their day. So uh, that's fantastic. Um, how, can, how can the listeners reach you if they want to learn more about you, about how they can also put together some hygiene packages and, you know, pass them out? Or if they want to know more about Pioneer Title, where can we find you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm, I office out of primarily out of the Pioneer Title Office at uh, Scottsdale Kierland, so North Scottsdale location on uh, uh, 14850 North Scottsdale Road, suite number 160 in Scottsdale. Uh, also, best way to always reach me is my uh, cell phone, 602-799-2345. Um, you know, talk or text, uh, I'm good with that. And uh, Again, I'm always happy to, my phone's always on to answer any questions that people might have from an investment side or even from a philanthropy side if they uh, want to help me put together some uh, good care packages for some people. That's fantastic. And we'll make sure to include that into the show notes. And, uh, you know, Eric, I appreciate you being here today, sharing more about, you know, your life and kind of how your grandparents started in real estate, got you interested. And then now, 22 years later, you're you know, the top of Pioneer Title Agency and just the, the service and the the care that Pioneer Title gives to all the investors out there um, is huge, you know, and uh, I've had such good luck with Pioneer Title and, you know, I've built great relationships with all of you over the years here and, uh, you know, really appreciate you getting on the show to share all that information. So, um, you know, with that being said, thanks again and we will talk to you real soon. Absolutely. I appreciate you having me on and uh, look forward to uh, hopefully being a part of your uh, podcast again. I really enjoy listening to it. And uh, for any investors who haven't, um, they're missing out. So continue doing the good work on your end. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Talk to you soon. Thank you, buddy. Have a good day. Bye-bye.